Hello, and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Steve and Adam Show. Hey, I'm Adam. Hey, I'm Steve. How's it going there, Steve? Pretty good. It's pretty good. We have a lot of fun with uh, Windows Hello for this and some autopilot, all that fun technologies that are uh, very in demand at over on the internet. <coughs> As you know, how yourself, Adam? Well, I'm I'm uh, I'm doing all right. I feel a little bit left out though, because I'm noticing that you've got a little bit of new artwork hanging out behind you there, and and I I don't really I don't really have any of that, and I'm well. I mean, I kind of kind of maybe have a little something. I so um, I I don't know if you can see this, but uh, I made I made me a, a logo as yeah. well. Okay. So, cool. I, I mean, I might need to embiggen it a little bit at some point, but I, I think this is a good start, right? What do you think? That's a good start. That's a good start. All right. Okay, so we are going to – actually, Steve is going to um, – we recently attempted to do a autopilot white glove episode, and um, Steve discovered that, well, he didn't have his um, – uh, his his and white with hardware. yeah his his white glove machine wasn't really behaving properly and so we decided to start over and um, so now we've got a properly configured device that has a TPM 2.0 BIOS in it and is ready to go and yes. we if you've watched episode two of our series you will have already seen how to do. Windows Autopilot in a traditional, the traditional normal user directed version of Autopilot. So the idea here is that we are going to cover white glove, but we're going to start at the, we've already configured everything in Intune. We've already configured all of your policies. We've already configured all of the requirements for uh, white glove or for Autopilot in general. Yep. Those, those configurations are the same for for both scenarios, with the exception of there's one additional checkbox in the Intune portal that you have to enable to enable White Glove. Stephen, do you possibly have that on a screen you can share at this moment, or we can do it at the end if we need what to? What I'm thinking, Adam, is we'll do that at the end. Once we've built this computer up and we've set it up into White Glove, um, I'll bring up a web browser on the computer and we'll show you how that works. Um, there's also one other thing that I had to change uh, as a result of my last session, and we'll go through that in the demo of that uh, UI after this one. Okay, that sounds great. Um, so from there, so essentially we're gonna we're going we've got a physical hardware, which is the only way that you can that you can build and test um, white glove devices because it's hardware dependent. So you have to have a physical security chip, which helps the uh, Intune uh, autopilot Device service. S. Uh, the, uh, yeah. station. There you go. Uh, verify that you have a valid non-spoofed um, TPM so that it knows that it, this is a valid device. Um, it's a security measure because you're essentially allowing any device that meets this criteria to be registered to your tenant and automatically um, join your um, your tenant. And we kind of you kind of need to have some additional layers of security there and so by having the requirement for a physical hardware for a physical TPM is a way to achieve that. So you, you so if you're going to try to test this don't freak out when it doesn't work on Hyper-V because it's not going to work. Or VMware. Or VMware, yes. <clears throat> it doesn't work on either of them it, and or VirtualBox either. Um, it always will have to be on a physical device. Yes. Um, this is the same with the uh, device driven provisioning process as well. Um, for your kiosk computers and your wallboards and things like that. <coughs> so to get into the white glove scenario, what we're going to quickly do is, is we're going to kick off that whole white glove process. Um, and to do that, we need to hit the Windows key five times. Two, three, four, five. And you'll now see, rather than coming up with the traditional install provisioning package and reset device, which you had on Windows 10, 1809 or higher, or earlier, I should say, you now have this additional one, which is the Windows Autopilot provisioning. And from here, we can select this. Uh, it's going to now go and scan 
and find out uh, if there's a policy for this device. And if I've set everything up correctly, this will work and it'll come up and say, do you want to install this policy? And, and what we're actually doing is, uh, if you remember in the earlier video of Autopilot, we, we talked about the enrollment status page. And we're setting up the first two phases of that. So we're setting up the computer and we're enrolling it into Intune and Active Directory. So you'll see here we've got an organization of our Intune.training with a deployment profile of Intune.training like Love Demo. This QR code, it's pretty benign, pretty sh uh, simple code um, that has just, this is the ID that's been assigned to this device. So for tracking and things like that is what it's for. Um, we're just going to hit provision. And from here, you'll see that it'll go straight to that enrollment status page. Um, typically what we've found is this takes about five to 10 minutes depending on the device and depending upon uh, the applications that you've deployed to the device itself instead of the user object. So in this scenario, it would be recommended the more applications you deploy to the device, the less downtime you're going to have for the, uh, your end user. So this is where we can talk about that whole use case scenario. Um, well, great, because that's that, that's definitely what I was I was hoping we would kind of get into here. So, um, so yeah, so let's break down why we would use white glove over traditional autopilot. And uh, you and I have talked through a little bit of this on, okay, so there are some legitimate use cases where this might make sense. And uh, I know that recently I was having a discussion with a um, with someone where they were concerned about the payload uh, for um, like, so they've got a, a lot of users that use AutoCAD. So the AutoCAD payload, you know, it takes forever to install and it's, and, and so they're concerned that if you start autopiloting devices, then the user is going to take, you know, they're going to have a ton of downtime waiting on their AutoCAD, which is, is it's the only app they use all day long. So and, we've talked about, go ahead. Let, let's face it, those AutoCAD users are going to be expensive resources as well. You're going to be paying them a lot of money per the hour. So you don't want them to be sitting and waiting for that payload to come down. Yes. And, and so in our previous scenarios where we've talked about, um, I, I know we've had some strong statements about the uh, regular autopilot and saying, so who, who cares? Go get some coffee. Use, you know, lo once you log in, you start using you know, open up Outlook and Word and, and Excel and do your work because all of that should be there or you can at least use the web versions and things and you don't really need all of your apps there the first day unless it's a business critical app and then yep. how do you handle that? How do you make sure that your users get up and running as quickly as possible, especially in a scenario like this This guy was wanting to convert his traditional environment to, um, to full Azure AD join. Well, yep. That means you're re-imaging those or resetting those boxes, reinstalling the apps, so that you can go through the the UB experience here. So, this would be one of those cases where White Glove would be a good fit. Where you uh, and so Stephen, I'll let you kind of take over on yep. describing what you what autopilot or what White Glove does in the background and what what the scenarios are that that it covers. Yep. So White Glove underneath the hood, what we're actually saying is we're going to pre-stage this computer. This computer is going to have uh, de deployed to the device. It's going to be in, in Adam's scenario, AutoCAD. It's going to have Office going to be deployed to the device. And it's the, the traditional thought process behind White Glove and why it's a, it's a, it's an important use case is that production line scenario where you're sitting there and every minute that you're down is costing you tens of thousands of dollars of lost revenue of getting that computer changed over. This is where you can use Black Glove and have that computer provisioned, sitting there on a shelf, computer dies, you go and grab it, put it in, on the table, and within tw um, five minutes it's up and running for the time it takes for the user to sign in. So, so that's, that's the real use case, um, or use cases that I see for Black Glove. Um, when I hear organizations saying, look, we're going to do this for your whole organization, I start sitting there and questioning, why does IT need to be involved with the receptionists having 
of this installed on her computer or his computer um, or when you're sitting there um, and, and you've got say two line of business applications and they take a minute to install each or even 30 seconds to install each why are we paying for that extra headcount of IT to be able to do that when you can pass those expenses back into the business and you can spend your time training and educating your customers and it becomes this really great user experience rather than sitting here and going well IT has to control everything we have to ghost everything we have to image everything um, now I had a great conversation with one of um, our customers on Thursday this week where he's like all right I need to reset this computer and he, he was very new he, he'd not been trained well um, and he's like all right this computer's got a problem how do I get it back up and running it's like well you just delete it you send a reset command from Intune oh it's not working all right well we just reinstall Windows but but what about everything else and it's like no it'll clean itself up would I like him to go and delete the computer object yes but it will clean itself up and this is where white glove autopilot and all of these technologies if they're used in their thoughtful processes and, 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 and you review what you're doing and how you're doing everything and going, well, do I need to be doing this for my customer? They can be really valuable to the organization, but if they're being used as a tool to keep you employed, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I'd, I'd be suggesting that you may need to look at why you're doing it that way. Because me personally, I could think of nothing worse than sitting at a desk my whole day hitting Windows key five times and selecting install provisioning package for autopilot. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you there, man. I and I and I wouldn't wish that on any of any of our people. I mean, okay, so so we you know frequently go back to the so I'm an on on prem guy, so we've got config manager, we do OSD, we do in place upgrades. And so I'm I'm looking at white glove and saying, okay, so there are people out there that still do reference images who do a build and capture because they say, oh, I've got this huge, it's the same scenario even. It's the AutoCAD takes forever to install during OSD and I need it to go faster. And so the way we do that is we capture it into the image and we make a, make a reference image and we deploy that. And so- save 30 minutes and put Office in the base image. Yeah, yeah. And why? I don't know. I mean, why do you have an SLA that says you have to image a machine in five minutes? Who wrote that? You should fire that person. Um, it sh you shouldn't have a business process based on how quickly a, a device in your depot gets imaged. Like, that's just, uh, well, okay, I'll take that back. Maybe I was speaking a little too strongly. But I still, I feel that way, but I know that there are legitimate people that have legitimate cases for pumping things out um, at a rapid pace. And do what fits your organization. But think about why you're using the particular scenario, the particular, th you know, what which tool is the right tool for the scenario. Um, and in this case, White Glove really does have a valid use case, a valid purpose, and um, it will fit some scenarios in your environment, And but don't use it as a replacement for just doing a traditional autopilot. You've got a large portion of your population that should be able to benefit from the user user directed um, con, uh, portion of autopilot. Yep. If you're looking at it saying, "Oh, well, we need to have certain things there, you know, right away. We have to ensure right away that this." Uh, I mean, Intune's going to push the stuff down. It's going yep. to configure that device for you. You're going to be able to to see compliance for that device. You're going to be able to remotely, um, you know, look at that and audit those things and conditional access even. You can prevent the device from getting to things if it hasn't fully provisioned itself. Um, yeah. So use the tools that are, hey, we didn't get a red screen. Yes, this is amazing. <laughs> um, but so essentially, you know, use we, the, use the tools. This one. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, sorry, I'm getting really excited. But let me finish the, the, the thought here is just um, look at your tool set, look at what's available in Intune, and, uh, and apply the right thing to your process try to think of ways to do less work you know do your work more efficiently do this yep. kind of work less yep. you don't want to be clicking these wizards nobody you don't want to be unboxing booting up and and provisioning and powering down boxes to ship off to somebody all day like 
Why? Why would you want to do that? Why? Uh, so you can customize a thing and oh, please don't be one of those people that you also are getting the user's uh, username and password so that you can do their autopilot for them too and log in and provision the box for them before you hand it out. Please Sorry. stop doing that sort of thing. You should never know a user's password. Adam, I, I had the best story about that this week, right? So one of our customers, they have um, the requirement for the MFA when you enroll a device into AAD. And their junior support guy comes to me and goes, so why is it when new staff get their computer um, and we reset it, it rings the service desk to uh, prompt to allow them to log into their computer? I'm like, uh, <laughs> not meant to. Um, but what it turns out is the previous IT staff there um, decided I'm going to make it easier for my end users and I'm going to sign in as new employees, I'm going to sign into their account, but I need to set up an MFA. Well, what I'll do is I'll use the service desk number <laughs> and we'll go from there. And I'm like, I don't even know how we changed that. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's, it, and then this is where, while there was the best intentions at heart of going, oh yeah, I'm going to make it easy for this customer. I'm going to sign in, I'm going to do all of that for them. In the long run, they've made it so much harder for both themselves and the customer. It's like, well, what's the value of doing that? You've just turned what should have been a 30 minute job for the support and um, for the end user to conceivably two hours because they've got to try and get a hold of you to be able to go, can you hit hash for me? Uh, please, please, please stop treating your users like babies yep. stop treating them like children quit doing things for them they it, we we've got an entire generation of people that have grown up not knowing i mean we we've how do we say that have grown up with computers right, right. so like we grew up without computers and yeah. you know our parents didn't have computer and you know they came in wow. later in their lives or not or modern they had sort of sort of some computer <laughs> okay uh, I, I had a computer since i was two well i mean computer modern modern technology uh oh, let's I'll say that one if it was uh, apple 2c you can't really be classified yeah. a computer i i think let's let's pair it with smartphones the the age yeah. of smartphones i think is really where technology really started to m become more more mainstream where everybody's mother is is somewhat savvy at least with their iphone or you've got you know smart tvs where you every people have rokus and fire sticks and and uh whatever the google thing is um exactly. apple tv and things and, and so there's but there's a whole pile. My, my children are growing up with technology. They're not going to need an IT person to do this for them. They're just going to click the buttons and move on. That's right. Help, help your users become smarter, become more capable, become more tech savvy. Because what's going to happen is they're going to stop making as many silly mistakes. Uh, they're going to stop you know, getting you ransomware and clicking yep. on things that they shouldn't be clicking on. They're going to be able to to see and detect things a little bit better and be, and they're going to call your help desk less. They're going to need less support The the less you're going to need less first level staff helping them out. There's a whole lot of benefits here that are, if you just, just give it to the users and enable your users, train them, but enable training. them. It's always about training now. You should always be educating and educating and educating. So, this whole out of box, box experience, like when we first started talking about this 18 months ago, I don't know if our users could actually handle this. And it's like, it's the same thing that you get from Best Buy or JB Hi-Fi in Australia, where you go, you buy a new laptop and you're selecting your country, you're selecting your keyboard, and then you sign in. No, 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 but that's the guy at Best Buy doing it for you too. They they open the box and, and here, let me help you. Let me let me get it all set up for you. So we I know. don't do that in the, in, at JB or any of the stores <laughs> in Australia. You're on I, your own. I have a mother-in-law who calls me frequently, <laughs> just saying. Uh, but anyway, this there, there there is, you could spend the money 
that you're currently spending on your first level tech support um, on on user training and have more bang for your buck. Yes. I guarantee it. Definitely. 100% any day of the week. Yep. Nice. All right. Well, let's uh, let's stop preaching and let's see what happens when you click this button. Cool. We're going to hit reseal. And what that will do is it'll actually go and shut down the device. So it's the, think of it the same as what we used to do with SysPrep reseal. And this is where it's getting it ready to be able to be sent out. So what you'll see on the um, feed is it's sitting there and saying, just a moment, that on the actual Surface Pro that I'm working on, it's turned off. Um, because the screen capture device we're using hasn't caught up. So what we're going through now is I'm just bringing up the computer back to the out-of-box experience. So here's the important thing with that white glove process, the end user still goes through the end, uh, out, th still goes through the out-of-box experience. It's just truncated. They still pick their region. They still pick their keyboard. They still need to put in their email address. Everything still needs to be entered. So the time that it's saving you is just the component of the re uh, the enrollment and everything associated around that. And that typically takes, as you saw on my screen, uh, eight minutes. <coughs> and and that came up pretty quickly, and it gave us what we needed <coughs> to have happen there. Now, Stephen, I, I noticed that we didn't have the opportunity to log in fully into the desktop to do anything there. Is there a so is there a point at, during the white glove experience for the for the IT person where they can actually get to the desktop and do anything on the device, or is it all just configured on the back end through policies and and applications being pushed down through Intune? Uh, it's all just configured from Intune because why should we and what why would we uh, enable um, a an admin to bespoke of a computer? Um, obviously, they can hit Shift F10, go into the command prompt, and bring up Explorer and do a whole heap of things there. But we are wanting a standard, consistent configuration. And as soon as we start stepping outside of that, we start getting ourselves into a position where we have bespoke computers, we have pets, and nobody wants to rebuild them. So like my laptop, my, my work laptop today, I finally I went down my own, uh, uh, took my own medicine, and I reset my computer. And That's like, about time, man. Yeah, it, it's been sitting there for 18 months. I'm like, yep, it's fantastic. I ended up with 223 applications installed on it, and it was really slow. And how many of those applications did you need this morning after you rebuilt it? Oh, I'm only at about 20 at the moment. But, <laughs> I'll probably, but by the time I finish today, it'll probably be about 60. <laughs> um, but, he, but the thing is, um, why I laugh about this and go, oh, because I, it was a big thing to reset my computer. But that's because I have so many different things going on at the same time. And with, it's also my lab. It's... it's it's part of my whole job. Um, and, and this is where we can't package everything for our laptops because otherwise we'd be here all week just packaging little apps like the um, software I use for recording the studio software and, and things like that. And I don't need to, but anyway, um, it's that the story goes down. Look, it's not. You don't want your computers to be pets. You want them to be cattle. You want them to be just disposable. If somebody loses it, who cares? It's BitLocket. It's got conditional access. Their account's password's been changed. They can't access anything if it gets cracked. Whoop-de-doo, let's move on. Here's your new computer, and we're going to claim the insurance on the other device. Yep. <laughs> Um, and, and that's what we should be getting to with mobile phones, laptops, everything. Corporate data, yes, it's on there, but it's, it's, it's secure at rest, it's secure in transit. Um, so let's go through this out-of-box experience again, and we'll see how it looks any different to the end user. So we're going to select our uh, language, um, which is going to be English US. Um, that extra screen is because of the uh, image that we've got on this laptop because um, it's still a factory build from Microsoft. Uh, 
we're going to select the region of Australia and our keyboard is going to be US we don't want a second keyboard and now it's going to go and see if there's any policies that are available for me for autopilot as well as patch the computer if there's anything that's needed um, because both of those scenarios haven't ran previously so this may actually restart um, and we'll go through pick that up Oops, sorry now uh, and so the did you just, just restarted all right so we've got a re I don't uh, in a second yes or maybe sometimes it comes up so this is the technology we're using um, and here it's coming up Adam all right um, so what we have is sitting underneath the screen capturing solution is uh, the Razer Ripsaw uh, which allows us to do HDMI capture at 1080p um, so we can have we can go and capture a remote computer and see all of this information um, and it's not just for the Surface or the Windows computers, we're also going to be able to do iOS and Android as well. So I'm just going to quickly sign in here with my Intune training account. Now you said you said something that made me wonder. So during the white glove experience, do from the IT perspective, yep. do we get to apply security updates, patches, feature updates, yep. anything at that time? By default, no, it will not. Um, if you want, you can use, um, you can go into the command prompt and start up um, MS settings, which will open up the um, settings page that you'd see in Windows 10 and mm -hmm. allow you to actually run updates if you wanted to. Um, but again, that's, it would work. No problem. That's just extra effort that you've got admin sitting there and doing it once. But it's potentially one of those things where you would you yeah. could do something like that if if it was more more mission critical and you knew it was going to get hit with with some That's updates right. or something. Um, what you'll and, and I guess the other thing is really make sure that you're ordering your devices with the right OS on them so that you yes. don't have to go through that process as well. So make That's sure right. that you work with your hardware vendor to ship you the right OS for your environment. Yeah. Um, so Adam, it's worth noting here, you'll see that after I put in the username and password, it went straight into the well, uh, welcome to Windows 10, hi, we're getting everything ready for you screens, which means that it was signing into the user context. Um, and now when we're at the enrollment status page, the first two options being the device preparation and the device setup are uh, completed already and the account setup is the last piece that's been completed. And this is where it's joining, uh, it's linking the device to my account being Stephen at Intune.training. Um, and then it'll go through and apply any policies or applications that are required. So this should be pretty quick, I think, from memory. Um, and there you go, and let us in there and do everything we need to do. Um, <coughs> so yeah, it's, it's that end user experience we're saving in, in this scenario, about 10 minutes, um, eight, eight to 10 minutes. Uh, so think about that when you're doing this sort of engagement is, well, how much is it actually going to save my end user um, by doing it for them? And, and, that's, and that's that big conversation, whether it's updates or whether it's, um, whether we're going to be going in and installing CAD or something like that. That's all scripted, obviously. Um, and silently installing from Intune, um, what it'll do is it'll allow for that whole process to be sped up. Um, so I'm just going to skip this for now because nobody needs to see my face on that. Um, so I just need to approve this on my phone. Approve. And so if you've, if you've watched our previous stuff or you've done autopilot before, this should look awfully familiar. This is the same, the same experience. Right. We just got some other provisioning that happened in the background before we started. So it's uh, largely the same thing. Exactly. And if we go 
Mm. And the big, I mean, the most important thing is it still doesn't take the user out of the loop on this process. No. It's, you're still, the user still needs to go through this. And um, so, you know, that's, that's just really part of the deal. Is that, yes, the user is still going to have to do stuff. Um, and you should never be doing it on behalf of the user. Never, ever ask for usernames and passwords. That's really bad security. Yes. Oh, Lord. Um, all right. So now what I'll go through quickly on the back end here is what I had to change to make this work. So in our previous videos on setting up the tenant, so we were then on video one um, and maybe part of video two, uh, we spoke about the mobility MDM on LAN section. Uh, in here, uh, you will have seen in that video, we had two options here, one being Microsoft Intune and one being the green icon with Microsoft Intune enrollment. Can you, um, can you plus yeah. uh, zoom in on your screen just a wee bit? There we go. Yeah. Um, and this is under the mobility MDM LAN section. So what I found based on some internet um, discussions um, is that if the green one exists there as well as the blue one, you need to remove the green ones to allow um, the Windows autofile white glove process to work. I don't know. Yeah, and that would have been in uh, video one would, yep. would have been where we covered that. Yep. So if you watch through that, we got to this point and we talked about why there were two Intunes listed there. Yep. Um, and so we've since <laughs> discovered 14 videos later <laughs> that you need to you need to delete that guy. You don't have to. Um, it's only in this circumstance and it's a workaround right now. So when I've set this up, um, I'm going to stress that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Your um, mileage may vary, but yes. just be aware. Yes. So what I've navigated to is that Intune autopilot provisioning profile. Um, and we'll see in here if we go to properties now, um, the UI has updated since we did the first video um, and how this looks. Um, as, um, and this is where you'll see there is the allow white glove out of box experience. And you just turn that to yes. Um, but th what that means is as soon as you turn that on, it can only be uh, that that process, the white glove process will only ever work for physical devices that have a TPM 2.0 chip. Period. There is no gray areas on that one. We, um, to the point where Microsoft themselves have gone out and gotten the HDMI screen capture devices as well to be able to do these types of videos. And and okay, so part of the deal there is that you didn't have to enter any credentials in order to do the white white glove experience, right? That's correct. The initial white glove um, process. I didn't so we put in credentials. Because... Took the device out of the box that had been previously registered from the vendor, from your hardware vendor, with your Intune tenant. Yep. So it was already registered for auto, for your for into um, autopilot or into your tenant, and then you configured it for autopilot. Um, and so that's the whole deal: is you, you've got that security there, making sure that you can't just enable any device and turn it on and, and get it provisioned into someone else's tenant. So right. because there, there was no other check, the TPM is the credential in this instance. I mean, the, that's correct. The whole device is the credential yeah, really, it, but the TPM the is what hash. helps us secure that, right? Yes, that's correct. Um, because that hardware hash is part of partly encrypted with the TPM, I believe. Um, cool. Makes sense. So I think that really covers across what we're doing with White Glove and why it's a useful scenario for certain niche circumstances. Um, this is where we spend a lot of time wanting to make sure the system works um, and we then build it out from there. Um, and, and the other one that we talk, we haven't really covered and we probably won't is that Azure AD um, hybrid join scenario. Um, and, and there's reasons for that, but we, we, won't, we won't go into that today. <laughs> yes, that is definitely for another day. Yeah. Um, cool. So I think that covers us all for this video, Adam. Uh, is there anything else you would like to add? 
no, I think this is great. Um, I liked it, and I especially liked the green that we got to a green screen. I was that really was nice. Happy when I saw the green. <laughs> <laughs> I was holding my breath the whole time. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this is this is great. Hopefully, uh, you guys will find this useful. And as always, you can find us on social media. Yep. I'm I'm uh, at Adam Gross TX on the Twitter, and I'm at on prem cloud guy. On Twitter. Right. And, and also there's details in the in the uh, description box below to uh, our blogs and other um, stuff and to our social media and other things. So uh, feel free to reach out to us. We've definitely enjoyed hearing from you guys. You've given us some good um, definitely. thoughts, you know, to get good things to uh, discuss. And so we're and we are listening. Back. Um, as you can see, we're, we're experimenting with the how we record it and how we push it out and make it so it's available. Um, we're, we're still having feeding problems, obviously, but bear with us and we'll still get, we'll, we are still enjoying making the content for you. Yes, absolutely. All right, well, take it easy, Steve. Same to you, Adam. <laughs>